And some ministers and cabinet members, members have shared their experiences working with the president in the past eight years. They say the president is leaving a more stable nation despite the challenges. But when we came on board in 2015, uh, Nigeria was quite challenged in different areas. Security, the economy, uh, in 2016 went into a recession. All said and done, we were able to fashion a national response uh, that has been adjudged to be one of the best globally. And that helped us to exit the recession that most countries had gone into. It was a huge learning process working with the president. His level of integrity and wisdom is on parallel. And then I was uh, also privileged, I have been privileged to work with colleagues who have very high work uh, standards and work, work ethics. We have had um, uh, the incidents of two recessions during this uh, period of this administration. We were able to pull the economy out of recession by adopting a replacement stand. We have been able to increase the size of the national budget from 4.5 trillion in 2015 to 21.7 trillion in 2022. He was uh, paying attention to details. He allows you to do your work without interference and he supports you, he gives you all of the powers that you need to exercise the privilege that he's given you. He's never worked like a boss uh, or master uh, with a servant relationship. He was a colleague, he was a senior colleague, he admonishes us and he put us through to our work and he gives us the latitude to play. He's been able to redefine governance um, equitable distribution of power and representation. What do I mean by this? As someone from Koji State and um, from the Koji West local Jakarta federal constituency, they have been served only from 1981 to 83, I think the last time from Ali Makele, Minister of Steel, and never got served again on the cabinet level. To me, that's injustice to my people. To me, that is underrepresentation of my people. To me, that is the service to my people. But President Muhammad Buhari has been able to clearly show and beam this such light to not only the minority people, the competent minority people across the country. The years I've worked with him have not been too easy. I have to be very honest with you. Not for him, not for me, and not for the people that I coordinate, not for the armed forces. In terms of the security situation, however, we've tried as much as possible, regardless of the fact that many people may not have been able to see the successes achieved by the administration of President Muhammad Buhari. But these things are always shifting in terms of time, in terms of space. These conflicts can only be resolved with a whole of society engagement. It is extremely important. He is a man of wisdom. We learn a lot from him. He's a man, and he has a lot of uh, sense of humor. Mr. President has done his best for this country, and I pray and I thank God for the opportunity that I was given. Uh, yesterday was the icing of the cake, the approval of the uh, WE policy. That is a major milestone for Nigerian women because approving that uh, women economic empowerment will go a long way to fill in the gaps of women being sidelined in contracts, in all other issues. The 35% affirmative action will come to play. And for everything, that in, uh, uh, involves financial transaction, uh, social investment, women will be in the mainstream. All right, we're joined now by the special advisor to President Buhari on media and publicity, Femi Adesino. Thank you so much. Uh, good Thank to you. see you. I mean, while watching that report, uh, you, you grinned at some point, you laughed at some point. <laughs> One can only imagine the emotions going through uh, you. But the last eight years yeah. seem to have gone by so quickly. But in your words, how would you describe the last eight years under the Buhari administration and also working you know, closely with him? Yours was about the first appointment he made in 2015. Yes. Hmm. 
Thank you, eight years is um, just a small fraction in the life of a country. But then in the life of man, it's a significant time. I would say the last eight years have been quite challenging, but uh, we have made progress. We are not where we were eight years ago. Like I heard someone say that I think the SGF, the country was challenged on many fronts as of 2015. It's not that the challenges have completely fizzled out now, but we are not where we, are. we were. We have made a lot of progress in eight years. Then working with the president, delightful, delightful. When you work with a man that you admire and respect, mm -hmm. it's almost not as working, it's like service, you know? Mm -hmm. To me, working is just an earning a livelihood. But when you work with a man that you admire, it's service. And that's how I have seen the past eight years, service to a man. I respect. You know, you, uh, for a journalist, uh, uh, first again, I, I think congratulations are in order. I'm excited when I order. see a, a journalist who's done his job uh, mm. till this very moment. Uh, so, uh, but let me jump in because I know you must have a memoir oh. and you have something to <laughs> yeah, give to the country. Yeah. Now, let us the high points. W what are the high points for you, uh, you know, when you came up? He, uh, of the eight years? Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, yes. Mm. Well, quite, quite a lot. Um, I traveled with the president to almost all the continents of the world. And the biggest high point for me is the respect that I see foreign leaders showing him everywhere, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Biggest leaders in the world, so to speak. Obama, uh, Trudeau, many, many presidents, they respect our president. We were in Spain, I think, uh, in July last year. You see how they spoke about our president. You'll be proud to be a Nigerian. What were they saying? Oh, <laughs> a man of integrity, a right. man of accountability, a straight man, a honest man. And you know these people, mm. they would not say that if they hadn't checked you. They must have done background checks. And they didn't find hidden money, hidden houses. King, King Charles, he was Prince Charles then, asked mm. him, do you have a house in London? And the president said, I don't have it, an inch of soil anywhere outside Nigeria. He won't you like that kind of leader. Okay, <laughs> right. So let's talk about the low points. And, I mean, every Nigerian or most Nigerians would I immediately point at the state of insecurity. Uh, some would actually say that the general that was uh, defeated by bandits. It's not true. It's not true. Um, they say you can see a cup as half full or as half empty. It depends on you. You need to look back to where we were when it came. Like I told you earlier, the job is not fully done. But advances have been made plenty. As of 2015, bombs went off every day. Every day. Not once, not twice. About five times in a day, you had bombs from different parts of the But country. in the last few weeks or so yes. months, if you like, mm. uh, reports from Plateau State, from Benue. Plateau State How is endemic. How troubling are this really for the president? Plateau State is endemic. My earliest recollection of the problem in Plateau was under Babangida. Just not then. And then under Obasanjo, Yelwa, Yelwa, Shendam, Yelwa. Mm -hmm. And there was a state of emergency. The governor was removed. That was not under Buhari. Those are endemic problems in this country. Southern Kaduna, my earliest recollection of that was 1980. They were not under Buhari, so they had been there. Mm -hmm. And unless the people themselves work for peace and want peace, it may not come. Uh -huh. government cannot be uh, uh, I'll, let, uh, I'll let Ungozi come back. I'll rather stay on security. I want to latch on to the perception now, the international perception, which is very key here. Mm -hmm. If everyone or most people you've met be excited about uh, the president, um, citizens, Nigerians living in the diaspora or Nigerians who travel out, uh, will be bothered that they haven't actually shared in that kind of respect that they give to us. You've seen people talk about our passport and yeah. just the name in Nigerian 
uh, doesn't actually accord you some kind of respect. So in, in that regard, what would you say the government has done so far in the last eight years to perhaps correct that perception about who truly a Nigerian is? Yes. It would not be solely for government to do. It's for the Nigerian himself and herself to do. If a Nigerian goes out to demarket his or her country, there's nothing government can do about it. We were in Dubai and I was talking with our ambassador. Things he told me about Nigerians in Dubai, you'd be ashamed. It has nothing to do with the government. It's the people themselves. So the people will first have to change themselves before they can change the reputation. Where does that change really begin? I mean, uh, we heard from Lai Mohammed the, the <laughs> yeah, yeah, information. Change begins, be, change begins with me. You, yeah. you would expect that the leadership would mirror yeah. who the Nigerian should be or aspire uh, to be. Do, do you think, are you saying that President Buhari actually mirrored, you know, the ideal uh, Nigerian in the last eight years? You know... President Buhari for who he is, squeaky clean, straight as a whistle, clean as a whistle. So if people would not emulate and uh, approximate what their president is, do you mm. blame the president for it? Mm. No. Mm. no. Well, uh, very quickly, let's uh, bring in this report and would like to get your reaction to it. Elder Statesman Chief Edwin Clark uh, says, President Muhammad Buhari neglected and marginalized the Niger Delta during his eight years in power. In a statement to mark his 96th birthday in Abuja, Clark says Buhari is leaving the nation, especially the Niger Delta, worse than he met it. He says insecurity has worsened as virtually all parts of the country are being attacked by terrorists to the extent that majority of Nigerians are gripped with fear and desperation. I have been in Nigeria now, working for Nigeria for over 70 years now. When I was at the age of about 25. And I've served this country in various capacities. But I must have offended people. I, must have, I told people that I don't hate anybody, but I will always keep my mind on any issue in Nigeria. In 2007, some time ago, I, I retired from active politics. I was a member of PDP. And I thought I was insane, whatever I do, defend Nigeria. We cannot be one country where by ways of mouth, we must love ourselves. We must trust ourselves. It is lack of trust that is breaking up Nigeria today. Nigeria is divided. Mm. That's well, uh, Chief E.K. Clark. Clark there. Yeah, you want to respond to some of the things he had to say there, saying that the Niger Delta was more or less neglected by President Muhammad. Well, Bukhari. I didn't quite hear that in the voice uh, that came, but right. maybe he said that. It will also be typical of Chief Edwin Clark if he said it, because that had always been his position. Under the Obasanjo administration, he, he maintained that same position. Under Yaradwa, he maintained that position. But under Jonathan, he changed, because Jonathan was from the South South, from the Niger Delta. When the 2015 election was going to come, he was up among those who said there is no vacancy in Asurok. And then when power changed hands, he became an opposition person. Yeah. Mm. That's what he had been against the Buhari administration all of eight years. And uh, he has a, he's a 96 year old man, he deserves our respect. Well, he has a right to his opinion. If that's his opinion, uh, he has but, a right but, to but clearly, uh, mm. uh, quickly here, because I, I remember that you coined the name Whaling Whalers to the opposition. <laughs> uh, I, would, I, I was hoping that that's going to make a book or a chapter in your book. <laughs> it will surely be. Uh, give us some background how, how, how that came about. Yeah, yeah. You see, 
Uh, it was not something meant for opposition generally. When we first came in 2015, Oli Sametu was the spokesman for PDP. Oli Sametu will issue a statement about a, an ant that was, that, 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 <laughs> that, that, was, that was going and not going well. And he said it's Buhari that caused it. If there was too much rain, Buhari caused it. If there was too much sunshine, Buhari caused it. He became almost a nuisance. And one day he issued one statement that was very, very ridiculous. So I did a tweet. I said, these people do not know that they have lost power. And they are going to lose it for a very long time. And I ended that tweet by saying, Willy Willers. And in a recent tweet, you still repeated that the Whalers actually wanted Buhari to fail. Do you think anybody actually, really, any Nigerian, actually, would have wanted uh, actually, uh, the Buhari to actually, fail? Actually, Buhari has succeeded despite the Willy Willers. Despite them. Buhari is landing and landing well. Despite the Willy Willers. Okay, Willis. now, going on what Edwin Clark said. Yeah. Mm. If you were to respond, uh, what would you say this government has done for okay, Nigeria? I didn't conclude the yeah, yeah, yeah. story. <laughs> <laughs> right, so originally it was meant for Olisametu and the PDP. And then the Willy Wheelers adopted <laughs> that name. They started saying he was talking to us. So they adopted it. And if they had adopted it, who am I to say no? It's not you. <laughs> Okay. So, um, very quickly, you, you, you actually wrote a piece where you questioned the veracity of uh, Ruben Abati's <laughs> position about the ghosts, you know, and Aso uh, Aso Rock. I you said you've, you've not seen any, I've but it would be any. nice to get your advice to the next president's uh, spokesperson based on your yeah. experiences at but the villa. Again, and, who, and it would be who, nice to so actually if, get if, an if idea of what those here, experiences if, I, are. I know, if you let me come yes. in here, because it depends on your <laughs> level of spirituality, <laughs> yes. perhaps, because what, he was talking clearly about spiritism. So, so perhaps maybe you were blind to all of that. No, he said he never slept one night in the house they gave him. I've slept eight years in that house, mm -hmm. and I've never seen anything unusual. I said in my piece that I snore so loudly, I wake myself up with the snoring. <laughs> and, and somebody never slept in right. his own house for one day. So different strokes were right. different. Right, so um, on the issue of, I mean, uh, you, I mean you're outgoing. Uh, by Monday, yes, it will be a new, a new uh, dawn mm -hmm. uh, for Nigeria. You've been at the villa eight years as the president's spokesman. Uh, what would you say were some of the uh, challenges for you to defend, especially when uh, situations appeared indefensible and you had to defend, you know, the uh, administration or the, the, the president? And what would be your advice to the next spokesman yes, um, or spokesperson you for see, that matter? President Buhari is one of the easiest people to defend because he's a straight person. He does not expect you to lie. He does not expect you to color anything. He wants you to say it as it is. And he will say, I stand by it. Therefore, it's very easy. The, the greatest injustice you can do yourself is to go and lie for President Buhari. He will come out and say, I, I didn't say that. <laughs> so we have learned to just represent him the way he is and the way he likes to be represented. Mm -hmm. And then for anybody who is coming, I'll just tell him, is it a job you want? <clears throat> this, is, this is not an easy way to make a living. Not easy at all. Why not? But if it's an, a, an assignment you want to carry out, mm -hmm. you want to give service to your principal, you want to give service to the country, then you will enjoy the job. For me, it was service, eight years. Do you think the media in this last eight years were more or less... Uh, unkind or unfair to your principle? No, I think the media was just doing its job. If you look at the history of the, the media in Nigeria, the media was born into activism. First, they, they were fighting colonial rule, and after colonial rule fell, they began to fight military rule. And military rule ended, and they will always find something to fight. The media was born into activism, and it will remain active. So, we just take the media the way it is. You see that we have not gone after anybody. Mm. We just feel, well, that's the media. 
That's what we did. So why would so what, we expect what, what them not would you to say, do it? What would you say are the records of the media under President Muhammadu Buhari? Since I had been an internal person, the assessment should be done from outside. It's the peop people in the media themselves that can say this is how we are fared under the Buhari administration. So quickly, uh, uh, before the next question, uh, correct me uh, if I'm wrong. Uh, is it an okay uh, for me to say pass of Femi? Uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, there you uh, go. That now we understand perhaps why those spirits uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> didn't come close. Could that be yeah, so, so, part so, of the reason why so, the ghosts so, so, were so afraid of so, a pastor? <laughs> so what's next for you uh, yeah. from Monday? Next, from Monday, I'll first take a holiday. It could take months. Within Nigeria or outside uh, anywhere, Nigeria? Anywhere in the world. <laughs> anywhere in the world. Uh, take a holiday, two, two, three months. But from September 1, I'll be doing something. And my, 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 my next question, you know, we, we, in Nigeria, we always talk about religion. Yeah. And here you are, Pastor Femi Adishina, mm. working with Muhammad Buhari, a yeah. Muslim. Yeah. And mm. I know you don't speak Fufude, and people will also the talk about... The president himself doesn't <laughs> speak Fufude. Good. So go. tell us the relationship, how it's been like working with someone who is of a different faith with Good. you. Mm. Good. I was telling somebody earlier this week that if anybody should have been Islamized, it should be me. But I've never, I've never seen that. Nothing, nothing about uh, approaching me to embrace another faith. And, uh, no, I've not seen that. The president respects your religion. I, I remember our first year, our first Christmas in office. I went to meet him, asking that I needed to go to Lagos to be with my family for that season. And he said, yes, I had intended to tell you that take the season off. Say, I know you and the <laughs> vice president are church people. <laughs> they say, go. When you come back, me too, I will go. So why holiday. do you think this whole talk about Islamization agenda deliberate, gave traction? Deliberate demarketing, deliberate misrepresentation. Buhari had always been deliberately misunderstood. It's not that the people don't know the truth, but they deliberately misunderstand him, to demarcate him. And that worked against him for many years until people saw through that facade and voted for him in 2015 and he became president. And one big moment for President Buhari happened this week when the military honored him because when he was uh, you know, removed uh, in the coup then, he was never honored as a general. But now, as a civilian president, all generals in the military came together recently to honor to him. Honor him. Yeah. Did you have how that conversation that with him? How, how did he feel? He's commander-in-chief. So, you see that in the past few weeks, he had worn the uniform of a full general. He had worn the uniform of an admiral in the Navy. He had worn that of the Air Force. He wore it on Tuesday at the regimental dinner. He's commander-in-chief. Very quickly, there seems to be this love affair between President Muhammad Buhari and uh, Niger Republic. What exactly is that <laughs> all neighbors. about? I he mean, said, he, he tells like us, he can't wait to leave us. He so tells us or, that uh, Daura, his town, is about six kilometers to the Niger Republic. So if they share that uh, contiguous relationship, naturally, then if he wants to just cross over, he can yeah. cross over. And the presidents of Niger Republic had always been close to him. Mm -hmm. But the uh, Northern Elders Forum have yes. actually you know, criticized that statement coming from uh, President uh, Buhari, saying it's unpresidential so, so for the leader of a country so, to actually market another country. So, so people will criticize anything, anything. And you know that the Northern Elders Forum had always been anti-Buhari. They had their candidates in the two elections, and they failed in those two elections. So it's not new. So, so in 30 that? seconds, if you can, <laughs> in right. 30 seconds, yes. in 30 seconds, do you think history will judge President Buhari well? Yes. Um, I think, How do you think um, it was our will? chief of staff who told the story. Uh, last, I think it was on Friday we had a dinner. That Winston Churchill was asked, how would history record him? He said, very well. History will record me well because I intend to write that history myself. <laughs> there you go. And he said he wrote six different volumes. 
you would have seen that a lot of writings mm -hmm. on the Buhari administration have come out. They've been launched, and mm -hmm. that will be uh, uh, some and, of the things uh, that... And, uh, will he write a book? Because it's no, no, he never, had, he had, never really He had one. said it that he would not write. He would not? He had said it. Why? And he says if he writes, he will be doing uh, like an... It, it will be injuring too many people. Mm. He said those people who are dead, their children are still alive. And if he writes all that he knows, those people will be injured. Uh, and he uh, does uh, not uh, want uh, to enjoy uh, it. I anybody. thought you, you would have been able to convince him to put uh, that into a book. Well, because, because that's where you come in. Oh, yes. Those of us who work with him, right. we will find books coming. Right. Not just about the achievements of the administration, but about worry demand. Will you also write why he's sort of become a Father Christmas of sorts in the recent times, you know, <laughs> approving all kinds no, of budgets, no, asking no. for this loan. One thing and about that. the what president. Is, why, why now? One thing about the president is oh. that at the personal level, he's very thrifty. In fact, he tells you, you say, I'm a stingy man, and then he will laugh. But when it comes to what will do Nigeria good, he will always do it. Are you with your phone there? Is your phone still ringing? <laughs> <laughs> Before I came into government, my phone overrang. <laughs> While in government, it continued overringing. And I know that outside government, it, it will still ring. It, it, it will continue to <laughs> ring. All it's right. a fine place for us to leave. Yes. Yes. Many thanks for speaking with us Thank and you. best wishes. Thank you.